Hey there, I'm Joe Weems. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you about NGConf 2023 happening in Salt Lake City, Utah on June 14th and 15th. Head over to ngconf.org to check out the speakers, check out the talks, and to get your ticket before they all sell out. We'll see you there. So last year in October, we published this uh, design proposal for making the NG module optional. And there was like really great and detailed discussion going on. And based on the initial design and your feedback, we went on with the implementation. In Angular 14, we introduced this set of standalone APIs that changes the way you can write components and structure applications. And indeed, here's the entire Angular application in just one slide. I'm Pavel, I'm part of the Angular team, and today I want to go over the motiva motivations for the project, show some more code examples, and update you on the progress. So why did we start this project at all? Like, why making ng modules optional? And to kind of answer this question, we need to dive into the roles played by ng module and all the consequences of those roles. So let's think for a second about what happens when we do my component tag in a template. I mean, how does Angular know that it needs to connect to my component class that actually implements the functionality? And we can see that there is some tag name or selector matching going on, but the whole story is more complicated than this. In a typical application, you might have hundreds, if not thousands, of components. An Angular compiler will have to work very, very hard if for each and every tag in a template, you have to go back to those hundreds and thousands of components and ask them one by one, hey, do I have a selector that matches? Do you matches? Do you activate in this template? So one of the primary laws of ng modules is to create a smaller subset, this group of components, directories, and pipes that can potentially match in a template, just to make the compiler work easier. Also, over the years, we kind of developed different patterns and best practices around ng modules. The, in the community, you can say various recipes of how many ng modules do we need for an application or how many components can fit in one ng module. So, in a sense, ng modules become a backbone or the architectural pattern almost. But the rules of ng modules are not always clear, especially for new developers. So there are too many ways of uh, configuring a subset of directives for the compiler, and on one hand we've got declarations, which is this group of friends that can see each other and collaborate and uh, call each other. Then we've got this export field, which can decide that some of those people here can be visible to the external world. And then we've got import, which can bring those external things into my module. So we start to create some module system <clears throat> that kind of resembles JavaScript one. But the story doesn't end here because of the dependency injection. We've got also the provider fields, and we can have those tokens and services that we later on can inject into individual components and directives. And if we kind of step back and look at this picture, there are a few concepts already, and there are a few arrows going on in different directions those concepts are kind of related to each other and they play in a certain way. And you need to learn those rules. The ng module study doesn't end with providers. What you can see here, or hopefully you cannot see, is the entire API documentation for add ng module uh, API properties. And again, I don't expect you to know all of them. I certainly don't remember all of them. Uh, and I don't expect you to read through them, but just acknowledge that there are so many responsibilities put on the shoulder of ng module. So ng modules are important, but they do have confusing bits. It's this non-trivial concept that needs to be learned by everyone. To create even the simplest possible Angular application, you need to know about ng module. It like, needs to be introduced very early in the learning journey. NG modules act as this layer of indirection between your component tag and the component class that actually implements the functionality. 
and this indirection adds friction to the experience. Every time you create a new component on directive, you need to kind of think like what model will declare this new thing. Or even worse, you might need to create a new engine module to actually declare your component. And because we've got this layer of indirection, we cannot reason or we cannot lazy load components individually. We actually need bring the associated context with us. Finally, JavaScript modules kind of mimic or maybe even duplicate the concept of JavaScript modules. And especially for new developer, it's not always clear what we mean by importing. Do we mean JavaScript import or do you mean ng module import? So ng modules are important and useful in Angular, but they also have so those like neaty bits. Can we do better? And that's all what the standalone project is about. It's about addressing those confusing bits without sacrificing the good parts of Angular. What does it mean in practice? Well, when we thought about the project goals, it was pretty obvious for us that we want to improve the developer experience and do so mostly by eliminating the number of concepts and APIs that you need to learn and master. As soon as we remove the layer of and direction, two things happen. Our the template dependencies are as explicit, so you can easily see what is being used in a template. But also, to our partly surprise, we realized that it opens up uh, doors to the use cases that were kind of inconvenient or even impossible before. What I mostly mean is component level lazy loading and code splitting. But also having these direct dependencies from template to the classes that implement functionality opens the doors for the file by file compilation and easier integration with tools like BitGS. Finally, when we were thinking about this project, we definitely wanted to preserve the spirit of Angular and don't break the ecosystem. We want to keep the overall mental model, but we also want to make sure that the existing libraries work as, as is without any modifications. Existing applications should work as is without modifications. So let me also address this upfront because that's the question I'm being asked quite often. The goal of this project is not to remove ng modules from Angular. We really want to make ng modules optional for the vast majority of typical use cases of like application developer use cases. Enough of motivations, this is what we came up with. On the left hand side you can see like a small Angular component with the association to ng module because yes I need to declare uh, a component somewhere. On the right hand side you can see the standalone equivalent. There is the standalone true tag, which makes a statement about component in relation to ng modules. I'm saying I'm standing alone. I don't want to have anything to do with ng modules. I don't depend on any context. I don't depend on any providers. Cool. We kind of cut ourselves off from the ng module world. So then, how do I manage my template dependencies? And this is what the imports field is for. It allows me directly specify in a component what is being used in a template. And honestly, this is it. This is the entire design. <laughs> so there are a couple of more code examples to just get comfortable with these new APIs. So we saw that standalone components can import modules because again, we want you to have the full access to the existing Angular ecosystem. We don't want to go to the library authors and say like, hey, go and just do some changes, republish it on APM to be usable in standalone components. But standalone components can also import uh, other standalone things. So here is the example of NGEF that is brought from the common module and it's possible because we marked it as standalone in 14.2. But standalone components can be also imported in existing ng modules. The scenario here is the applications that still prefer to use ng modules, but they want to benefit from the uh, new developments in the ecosystem. If there is a library that was published with standalone components, we still want to make them usable in applications that use ng modules. And this interoperability story is so important to us. We want to preserve the entire Angular ecosystem. 
We want standalone components to benefit from existing ng modules published on IPM. And we want existing applications that choose to use ng modules to import standalone. It's all the way working together without modifying existing libraries, without modifying existing applications. This avoids fragmentation in the ecosystem. Marking components as standalone means that they are self contained They don't depend on associated or hidden context of engine modules. And as soon as we make them self contained or self sufficient, it actually opens doors to other API changes and simplification in the entire framework. A few examples here. We've seen already on the initial slide the Bootstrap application API. And again, this is the entire application. I can just point the Bootstrap application to the component type, initialize everything, and have the component rendered as the root one. There is also a providers option for the Bootstrap application, and this lets me specify, well, providers the same way you would do this on the ng modules. And this opened doors to configuring entire application without ng modules. We did modification to the router where the new provide router function has everything that is needed to configure routing in the Angular application. Again, entire application here with routing. The part that I'm really excited about is component lazy loading. Previously, to lazy load the component, you had to create an ng module and actually load the ng module. Now, all it's needed is flipping this component property to load component and then using standard JavaScript import statement to bring in code and you know, point to the component that you want to instantiate. That's it. Yay! <laughs> But it's not only router that has those like ra lazy loading superpowers, you've got them too. One other change that we did is having view container ref accept component types in the create component uh, API call. Again, you just use standard JavaScript import, bring in the code, point to the component type, insert it as router would do. So there's quite a bit of API changes the way of bootstrapping application, and you might be wondering, okay, what do I do with this now? How do I write my application? The good news is that Manfred will be covering this very topic here on Friday. I believe it's like 1.50 p.m., uh, so please do attend this talk. So this is all the things that we did. Now, are we done with this project? Well, not quite. We've got some other plans. So V14 gave us those like standalone initial APIs. What we are doing in version 4 15 timeframe is the review of the entire API surface on Angular. So we, we are going to all those places which take ng module or a component type and making sure that actually those work with the standalone components. As soon as this review is done, we are happy with the API surface and we are not hearing about problematic use cases from you, we plan to make the standalone APIs, mark them as stable, and exit the developer preview. After this, we want to focus on ergonomics in the tooling. I'm mostly talking about the CLI and having minus minus standalone flag. We do have it for creation, for component creation, but we do want to have it for application creation as well. We are also working on a language service that will help with imports of the components. Now, if all this works well, and depending on your feedback, we will come back and ask a question, what should be the default experience for the new applications? Should the ng-new command scaffold application based on ng modules on standalone? I don't know. It will depend on your feedback. And so far, we are, we are getting encouraging messages. It's, it's great to see things that, like, you see some simplifications that translate to productivity gains. So this positive feedback keeps us going. It's encouraging. But we also, or maybe more importantly, tune into, I would say, um, things that don't quite work or maybe are potentially problematic. One of those things that keep being highlighted 
is the imports array that can grow a bit bigger and longer if your component is big, especially if the template is big with many dependencies. And to a certain point, it's expected. We want to manage dependencies explicitly, so we want to list them next to a template. But some of you are kind of rightly pointing out that this is somehow mimicking, if not duplicating, the JavaScript imports. So what can we do about it? Part of solution might be tooling. I mentioned that we're working on the language service that will help importing standalone components. Uh, we hope to have it in V15, and it will bring the imports both to the imports array and JavaScript imports. So this will help with the mechanics of importing. But maybe there are other possibilities. We can look at the control flow directives and maybe make them special, maybe make them always available. Or maybe we could think of changes to the Angular templating language and have control flow natively baked in into Angular template syntax. And I don't know what the character should we choose for Snowman. There are different possibilities. We could use something like Mustard syntax, used by Svelte, something else. I don't know. We haven't designed it. We haven't decided upon doing this. But this is conversation we want to have and the conversation we are having in the team. Likewise, we can think of the syntax that directly links type import to a tag in a template. Again, in the grand tradition of Angular introducing new syntax by snowmans, we could think of a snowman character that says, hey, I'm not going through a selector here, I'm just directly going to the type import. I don't know what snowman is. We haven't decided. There are many considerations here. But we are having this conversation in a team. I've heard this conversation going on in the community, and we want to have this conversation with you. Don't know. But if we kind of bake in some of those changes, we could have authoring experience which is somehow different compared to today's one. Again, not something we decided upon, not something we decided, but we want to have this conversation. To summarize it, today you can do entire Angular application without creating a new ng module. But the engine model is not going away. We've got interoperability baked in, so we can use as many of standalone components or as little as you want. At the same time, we are really committed to making the standalone experience really good, and we believe there is this potential of making the authoring experience really joyful. And if we succeed, we will come back to you again asking this question about the default experience. And I want to start this conversation today during the conference and after. Thank you.